Welcome to another class on Ultrasound Academy. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll respond quickly. Feel free to suggest topics too. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and support the channel for just 99 cents. Today we're diving into adenomyosis, a topic that can be tricky but is super important, especially for those of you studying or working in gynecological ultrasound. So, what is adenomyosis? It's a condition where the endometrial tissue infiltrates the myometrium. This can make the uterus larger than normal and give it that classic globular shape we often hear about. It's closely linked to symptoms like heavy menstrual bleeding, painful periods, and even infertility. And yeah, diagnosing it with ultrasound can be tricky at first. But don't worry, once you know what to look for, it gets much easier. Let's talk about the main ultrasound findings you'll see with adenomyosis. First, let's examine the myometrium, which can exhibit either diffuse or focal thickening. A diffusely enlarged uterus typically points to diffuse adenomyosis. When you notice focal thickening, it's crucial to differentiate between focal adenomyosis and an adenomyoma. Focal adenomyosis involves localized infiltration of endometrial tissue into the myometrium without forming a distinct mass. On the other hand, an adenomyoma is a well-defined tumor-like mass within the myometrium composed of ectopic endometrial tissue surrounded by hypertrophic smooth muscle. A valuable tip is to compare the thickness of both sides of the myometrium. If one side is thicker, that asymmetry is often a key clue. This asymmetry might indicate focal adenomyosis or the presence of an adenomyoma. The posterior wall is usually more affected in cases of adenomyosis. So, when you're scanning, pay close attention if one side appears irregularly thicker than the other. Now, let's delve into hypoechoic striations and echogenic lines. Hypoechoic striations are fine, linear hypoechoic areas extending from the endometrium deep into the myometrium, often running perpendicular to the endometrial lining. We often refer to them as Venetian blind striations because they resemble the slats of a Venetian blind. These striations represent disrupted muscle fibers caused by the infiltration of endometrial tissue into the myometrium. In addition to hypoechoic striations, you may observe tiny echogenic bright lines or buds crossing the junctional zone into the myometrium. These echogenic features might be in contact with small myometrial cysts that often have an echogenic rim. They represent ectopic endometrial glands and stroma within the myometrium. Paying attention to these bright lines or buds can provide additional evidence supporting the diagnosis. Sometimes, you'll also see echogenic islands, which are focal echogenic areas within the myometrium. Some of these islands may have a hypoechoic halo surrounding them. These indicate clusters of endometrial tissue embedded in the muscle wall. Another big one is a heterogeneous myometrium. Instead of that nice, smooth texture you're used to, the myometrium will look a bit mixed, with areas that are both hypoechoic and echogenic. One of the most specific findings? Myometrial microcysts. These are tiny and echoic spots, less than three millimeters in size, that stand out in the myometrium. If you see these, adenomyosis should be high on your list of possibilities. Finally, let's focus on the junctional zone the critical interface between the endometrium and the myometrium. Under normal conditions, this zone appears as a thin, smooth, and well-defined line on ultrasound imaging, a clear boundary separating the uterine lining from the muscle layer. However, in adenomyosis, the junctional zone becomes irregular and thickened due to the infiltration of endometrial tissue into the myometrium. This infiltration disrupts its smooth continuity, making the zone appear blurred or indistinct. When evaluating the thickness of the junctional zone, 
A measurement greater than 12 millimeters is generally considered abnormal and highly suggestive of adenomyosis, a significant diagnostic clue. If you have questions, drop them in the comments and I'll reply quickly. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and consider supporting the channel for just 99 cents.